WordPress is releasing version 6.8 in the next week or so, and that is going to be the only major release of 2025. But what does this mean for WordPress, the community, and the platform at large? Let's talk about a couple of things in this video. I'm not going to go into too much detail, and I would absolutely welcome your feedback and your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you agree or disagree with whatever I say, with the decision to scale back or anything else to do with this situation, the only thing I ask is to make sure that you keep it polite and on point. If you can do that, absolutely awesome. Okay, so there's an article over on the repository about this scaling back and some of the things that are included in the reasoning behind it. So let's just quickly say right off the bat that the key reason that this is happening well, the key person making this decision is Matt Mullenweg. And he is, for various different reasons, citing the fact that they have to pull back on their involvement and their release schedule for various different reasons. And one of the key reasons that he cites, and this seems to be the main thing that he cites on everything, is the whole situation going on with WP Engine. And, well, we've already talked about that in the past, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you already know what's going on there. Personally, I think it's an absolute cop-out. It's something that he started, whether you agree or disagree with WP Engine or the reasoning behind it to start off with, the whole situation degenerated into a really, really poor look for WordPress itself. And you can see the effect it's having right now. But what does this mean? Well, first of all, it means that the only major release, 6.8, is the only one that's going to come out with any kind of major new features. We will see point releases, which will have bug fixes, tweaks, and so on. But what does that mean for WordPress at large? Well, for me, I don't think it affects a lot of people in the way that they may think it will. For example, if you were using tools outside of core Gutenberg, you know, the Gutenberg editor, the full site editor, and so on, so using things like Bricks, Green Shift, Breakdance, any of those kinds of tools that sit on top of WordPress, I don't think it's going to make a massive difference to us. I think it's going to basically be work as normal. Obviously, we do have to kind of keep an eye on this because it could have implications for the uptake of WordPress and the continued maintenance and development of additional tools and plugins. We may see that people that have contributed and companies that have contributed to a lot of what WordPress is and what it's become get disgruntled with this whole situation and decide to look at alternative tools. We also have to consider a lot of people that are maybe considering WordPress, that may be blind to what's going on at this point in time, may start to look at other alternatives like Web Studio, Webflow, Wix, Squarespace, other tools. And I know you can say but they don't come close to what you can do with WordPress and then there's the liberation of your own data and all those kinds of things. You have to be realistic. Not everybody has the same thought process. Not everybody is that bothered about these things. Open source, it's a great idea. And if we can support it, brilliant. But a lot of end users, maybe through a lack of education or lack of caring, don't mind. They just want to have their website up and running. And that means that if they've got a shop, they may look at Shopify. They may look at Wix and the shopping options that are there. I think this culmination of all these different things could have and probably will have an impact upon WordPress. We've already seen a lot of people that would have considered using WordPress pulling back. We've seen more large organizations where security and things like that are incredibly important, looking at WordPress and saying no, whereas previously they probably would have said yes. That has a massive impact upon designers, developers, agencies, freelancers, and all those things mean that when you have your clients, and these could be big clients, these could be clients that you work with one for the entire year, and that brings in the bulk, if not all, of the income for your business and they are now saying no to this, you as a business seriously have to look at alternatives to WordPress because those clients are ultimately more important to you than the platform you choose to use. But there are so many things that I think are really sad here that's going on. And whichever side of the fence you land on, whichever sort of person or company or situation you blame, the net result to us as users is not positive. It doesn't set WordPress up to be what it could be. We've seen so much development time going into the Gutenberg project at the exclusion of so many other features inside WordPress itself. So if you're not using that part of WordPress, you were using something like, you know, a page builder or 
a sort of block plugin like Generate Blocks, GreenShift that sit kind of closer to core, but they're still adding their own functionality in. These all have impacts to you. The other sad thing to see is that a lot of the development team, the core development team behind what's happening inside WordPress are no longer part of it. They've scaled back automatic. There's been more layoffs going on, whatever the reasoning is. This has, again, like I say, a real negative impact because a lot of these people were not just involved in pushing WordPress. They were also involved in spreading word about WordPress, supporting WordPress, educating people on WordPress. And when you take these things away and what we kind of end up with is a more of a disseminated setup where a lot more people are maybe behind the scenes, they're not front facing. And we just end up with someone like Matt Mullenweg, who, let's be honest about it, kind of flits between the blame game and the victim and all these other things. And again, you might disagree with me and that's fine. You can let me know in the comment section, just keep it polite. That's not a good look for WordPress itself. And that's not a reason for people to start adopting this and using it. And I think long-term it's going to suffer. So we take a look at what Yoast has said recently, which is Matt has always been one of the biggest bottlenecks of WordPress. And with Automatic's diminished time for the project, that problem has gotten worse. WordPress only slows down because he's forcing it to slow down, not because there's not contributors willing to work on it. The current lack of leadership in the project leads to standstills. Not enough distributed decision-making power leads to standstills. So what does this mean? Do we need to have a different person in charge? I mean, ultimately, a lot of people would say, yes, that's the case. Maybe not just one person in charge, maybe more than one person. So there's not that immediately. If someone gets a little bit pissed off with the company, they can cause this kind of upset and disruption and so on to the whole platform. There needs to be accountability. There needs to be things in place to stop this kind of thing happening. But like I've said, what are your thoughts? These are the ongoing developments, the cutbacks, the pullback on WordPress. We're not going to see those new features. Do you care? Let me know in the comment section down below. But as always, like I say, all links to everything I talk about, including this article, will be in the description. Let me have your thoughts on this. Drop those in the comment section down below. Keep them polite. And until next time, take care.